Hey everybody, got an interesting one today um, that came from a post a few weeks ago from Yusuf um, where he said instead of starting with what we typically do which is an Excel file or a CSV file, how do we go about starting with online data and pulling that into Power BI and then analyzing it from there? And so similarly along those lines, I got a question yesterday from Daniel about pulling information off of the Yahoo Finance site. And so he and I worked through an interesting solution on that, and I can show that to you here. Basically, it's a, it's a dynamic solution um, where you can pick whatever stocks you want, and it'll give you that, that high-low close chart. Um, and you can pull that in at any granularity you want in terms of daily, weekly, monthly, um, annually. And so I wanted to show you really start to finish how to do this just because it, it shows really how powerful Power BI is in terms of web scraping and um, automated data pull capabilities. And I wanted to also show how easy it is. So instead of doing what I normally do, which is kind of work through it in, a, in an edited way and kind of hit the highlights, what I want to do today is, you know, kind of unedited so you know there may be some rough spots but I want to show you start to finish we're going to build this from scratch and we're going to start uh, let's close this file out and so we're going to start with an empty file and the only thing I've done to it is I've added two custom visuals I've added that high low close chart the candlestick by OK Viz um, and I've added the uh, chiclet slicer which is one that isn't necessary, but I just, for this sort of application, I like it better than the, the default slicer. So that's all I've done. As you can see, there's, there's no data here. Um, there's, no, there's no visuals. There's, there's nothing. Um, so we're going to start from scratch. We're going to put 15 minutes on the clock, and we're going to go. So we're going to build it out and then hopefully visualize it all in under 15 minutes. So... The place we start is at the Yahoo Finance site. And let's just do a quote lookup. And it doesn't really matter. You'll see why it doesn't matter in a minute. Um, what quote we pull. So let's let's pull Netflix. And let's go down to historical data. And let's say what we want to do is we can we can choose to say whatever granularity we want, but let's say we want three months. And we want to pull that for the weekly close, just so that it doesn't overwhelm the high-low chart. And we hit apply. And then instead of hitting hitting download, what we want to do here is we want to we want to right-click and say copy link address, since we want to pull the online version. And so we go here in our get data, and we're going to pull this through a web connector. And we can just use the standard basic web connector. We don't need to do anything fancy here. And we just hit paste and go. And you'll see that this pulls it in really nicely. We don't have to do anything. Um, we've got date, we've got open, high, low, close, adjusted, close, and volume. And that's, that's, that's all we need here. Um, so if we go into transform and we take a look, let's just Let's just rename this. Uh, we'll keep this keep that there for now. We'll rename it later. Go into Advanced Editor, and this is pretty pretty compact for what it's doing. But the thing we want to look at here is right here, the Netflix symbol. This is the static part of it that we don't want to have to pull that that quote for each each stock that we want. So what we're going to do here is we're going to kind of start the magic in the process, which is turn this into a function. And we're going to say stock quote as text and then as table since we want a whole array of quotes to pull and we want to iterate over that table. And then we just put the the arrow here and that turns into a function, no syntax errors. And now what we want to do 
is we look at this URL and this is the static part. So what we want to do is we want to replace this with our parameter. And so what we can do is we can close off the quote to close that first part off, hit and for concatenate, and then we can enter our stock quote parameter, pick that, end the concatenate here, and then the quotes now close out and we've got no errors. So now what that's going to do is it's going to take that URL and then each time it iterates, it's going to pull the stock quote from the, uh, the table. So we'll hit done here. And we'll change this to, uh, let's call this function uh, quote pull. Okay, so we've got our we've got our custom function here. The next thing we need to do is we need to create the table of stocks over which that's going to iterate. And we're going to do that by pulling that in from Excel. And we've got let's see pop up an Excel here. And I do have a, a, a table called a file called stock list. And we've got a, a column called quote symbol, which matches our parameter name. And so let's, let's think of the basket of stocks that we want to pull. And let's th say that we think the data challenges are going to be huge. And so they're going to start driving the market on stocks and we want to get ahead of that. So we want to take a look at, let's say Microsoft for Power BI. Um, people are going to need laptops, so let's enter Lenovo. Um, we're going to need big monitors, so we got Sony in the mix. Um, we're going to be up late, so we're going to need coffee. So we got Starbucks, and we got Amazon to deliver snacks and anything else we need. So we should be we should be pretty well set for the next challenge on that. Uh, we just hit save here, and then in Power BI we go in, and I think I've saved that to the desktop stock list. We pull that in, and take a look at how that pulled. Okay, not, not perfect, but close. So we hit OK. And then we'll, we'll go in and transform that. And the one thing we have to do is use first row as headers. And so now we're, now we're looking good. So now let's change the name of this to stock list. We still got nine minutes to go, so we're looking, we're looking good. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to iterate that quote pull function over our stock list table, over each of the the stocks that we're watching. And so what we do is we go to add column, invoke custom function, and let's call this let's call this pull. And the function query is going to be our quote pull function. And we're going to, the, the particular column that we're going to iterate over is our quote symbol. So we do that. And then this is looking good. So what we've got now is a table for each of the, each of the stocks we've got in our stock list table. And we can take a look at this. And that looks like it pulled in really well. So. Let's expand this, and we don't need to put the, the column name as prefix. And then the last thing we're going to have to do is we're going to have to type these these file these columns out. So we got the date column, we've got fixed decimals for these. These are going to be dollars. So let's select all these. Whoop. Go back. Hit shift. 
and then change type, and then fix decimal number. Okay, so those are now in dollars, and we just need to change that volume column to a whole number. And here we go. Go to home, close and apply, and now our web scraping is done. So now we go in, we got six and a half minutes, and let's start let's start doing some graphing. So we take our our candlestick table and let's pull that down. And you'll see by looking at the fields on that, let's make this is going to be the focal point of the page. So if we go here into the field, we've got our date field. We can drop that in here. And then the fields that we've pulled really correspond nicely to the fields in the chart. So we've got open, we've got close, we've got high, low, and what else? Oh, let's not worry about a trend line. Um, let's go in here, and I like putting the, the cap lines on the candle. So let's put the high-low caps on, and let's format our date. Okay, that's looking good. So now all we need to do is let's throw our chiclet slicer in. Whoop. Throw that into an empty space. Okay, that's more what we want. Let's move that to the right size. And we'll throw our quote symbol into that. Okay, and now we can go into the general here. And what we want is Let's put a whole bunch of columns in here. So let's put 15 columns in if we've got a lot of stocks. Um, and let's change the, the height of these a little bit. So we've got um, height. Let's call that 150. And let's go to the... Uh, what we want to do is we want to turn multiple selection off, force selection on. So we always want to have something selected. Um, and let's now go in, and we've got three and a half minutes, so let's make the chiclets look better. So we can change that to, let's say, 14 point, and Let's use a better color. Fits with our theme a little bit better. Let's try that yellow. Okay. And we can go and turn off the category name. So let's turn that turn that header off and move that up. and time. So there we go. We got three minutes to spare. So 12 minutes, we built a, a full web scraper, made it dynamic. We've graphed it out. Um, and I can show you here that we can click through and we've got our different, our different quote series. And what you could do if you really wanted to get fancy with this is you could go back to that URL and you could change the granularity parameters. So what you could also do is to have a slicer that said, okay, we want this daily, we want it monthly. You could put a date slicer in that changes the date range. 
Um, and you can build all that in dynamically in the same way that we did using parameters instead of the dynamic portions of that URL. And um, so at this point, um, that's really it. So um, let me just show you real quick, proving that this is this is fully dynamic. So let's say we want to we want to go here and let's change the portfolio to let's say Dell, um, Nike, and the Dow Jones. And let's take these remaining two off. Oh, whoop. Nike, Dell, and Dow Jones. And we'll save that. And we'll go back to our file, hit refresh. And now we've got three completely different sets of stocks here and completely dynamic. So that's all I've got for you today. Um, I hope you found that useful. Even if stocks is not what you're interested in, the general web scraping procedure that I showed you is really generalizable to a whole range of data that you can pull in online. Um, so anyway, if that was helpful to you and you learned something today, please throw it a like and be sure to subscribe to Enterprise DNA TV. We've got a lot of new content coming out, some new series that we're starting, and um, look forward to seeing you in the next video. So thanks very much.